first place goes to Pasta Dish number five. Yeah! Hey Junkies, Mandolins here. Hope all is well and you're staying safe as always. For today's episode, we're going to make jerk pulled pork. We picked up this beautiful pork butt from Winn-Dixie. Uh, they were running a crazy sale and you know sales are part of that frugal life. So we got it for $6.56. And that was for about six pounds of, uh, of pork here, which is a steal. Um, so the way we're going to prepare this, we're going to first hit it with a dry rub, right? Make sure all that flavor is rubbed in. And then we're going to make a uh, wet rub marinade, if you will. It's essentially going to be a mango vinaigrette. So I'll show you when I start chopping up those vegetables. Uh, then after we hit it with our dry rub, then the wet rub, we're going to let it sit for about 24 hours. And real simple stuff here, guys. We're going to set it and forget it. Uh, when you do any type of pulled pork or you're going to cook something slowly, braise it, it's going to be at a low temperature. It's already getting pretty hot here in Florida. So we're going to leave our oven at about 250, 275 and just let it cook from there. So let's get this rubbed down. We'll get everything chopped up. We have again our Jamaican seasoning here. So it's that hot curry powder with all those lovely spices, the turmeric, the salt, the coriander, the cumin, the pepper, the garlic, the allspice, the thyme, the scallion, the mustard, the fenugreek, um, cinnamon, uh, what else? Uh, of course, the allspice we said, the nutmeg, the lemon peel, the cloves, the cardamom, the ginger. So again, that Jamaican blend that we have with the star anise, you can see, uh, is going to be the dry rub. And again, we're going to make the uh, wet vinaigrette type marinade uh, with the mango acting as the main citrus component along with the lime. Stay tuned, junkies. Glad to see you back. Our Boston butt is all rubbed down. See how nice and pretty it is. Obviously the other side was, is rubbed down as well. Uh, I have the fat cap on the other side and you'll see when we actually put this in the oven uh, to roast it off low and slow, I'll be roasting it uh, with the fat cap on top. But now it's time for our wet marinade we're gonna make. So let's get this stuff chopped up and thrown in the bullet. As I'm chopping up the stuff for our wet marinade, uh, I did wanna take a sec and go over uh, literally how to cut up a mango. I've seen some really bullshit videos on YouTube. Um, there's really no secret nor shortcut on how to dispatch a mango. Um, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it uh, vertically around the pit. There's a huge uh, oval flat pit in the middle of it. It's a really creepy looking pit, but you're gonna cut it vertically all the way around, not unlike a uh, avocado. And then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna take a spoon and go underneath along the outline of the skin and you're gonna pull the skin off uh, each in one half and then with the actual flesh of the mango exposed you're gonna go in there with your knife and uh, cut it off while being super careful so again there's really no secrets here there's no shortcut please be super super careful as always the sharper the knife you use the safer you'll inherently be right most accidents come from a dull knife. Luckily, I got my Bokashi steel here, but let's get this mango chopped up with the onions and 
uh, we'll start preparing our wet marinade. Our mango is skinned and ready to be chopped up. As you can see, I removed it, the skin, using the spoon. It peeled right off. And speaking of the skin peeling right off, something that will make this easier, not exactly a shortcut, but just easier, and something you want to do anyway and always, regardless of whatever fruit and vegetables you use, is making sure what you're using is ripe and ready to be prepared. With mangoes, you want to smell them. I know it's a bit creepy um, nowadays uh, with the Rona going around, um, but you still want to make sure whatever you're buying is ripe. So when the mango is ripe, the skin peels off of it much easier. Uh, also, when you're cutting, chopping anything up, you want to make sure you make a good base for what you're cutting up. So a mango, it's an awkward shape, it's round, it's oval, like most fruits and vegetables. So it doesn't hurt slicing a little off uh, and making it a bit more stable. And you can see what I did there. So it's the little things, folks. When you commit, you know junk takes care of you. We have all of our ingredients chopped up and ready for our wet marinade. You see the mango the scotch bonnet habanero pepper. That's of course the orange thing in the middle. Again, junkies, this is jerk. You gotta have that heat. The red onion, and we're also gonna zest that lime uh, before actually squeezing the juice of it uh, in our vessel. And of course, we're gonna microplane or grate uh, the ginger and the garlic into it. So let's get all this stuff in our bullet and process it all up. Time to go for a spin. You can see all of our fruits and vegetables in there. From the top, you could also see the grated ginger, lime zest, lime juice, or seasoning, and also a little bit of your favorite hot sauce. You junkies need to smell this. My God, absolutely delicious. And remember, we never took the seeds out of that scotch bonnet, right? That's where all the heat is in the capsaicin. We just dropped that puppy in. So the flavor is absolutely remarkable. And the color of this puree, not entirely sure if it's coming through uh, the video. I know the smell isn't. But the actual color itself of our pureed marinade uh, is beautiful. It's like uh, between a, a salmon and an orange. We are going to pour on our marinade. And then we're going to work it in with a spoon. Now, pretty obvious, but you do not want to be touching this stuff with your bare hands, especially with that scotch bonnet, um, especially if you're going to touch your junk afterwards. Not a very good idea. So we're going to continue working this marinade into our pork using the spoon. And then when we're finished, we're going to get it in one of those free plastic bags that we take that you put your vegetables in uh, and get it in the fridge. Here's one side smothered with our jerk marinade. Let's do the other side, the one with the fat cat. And here's the side of our Boston butt with the fat cap. Kind of looks like a cake, a meat cake. But like icing a cake, you want to make sure that marinade, that puree we made, is spread over it liberally making sure you're getting it into all the cracks and crevices. The same way in which you made sure that dry rub uh, was thoroughly massaged in. So let's get this in one of our frugal bags <laughs> that are free. Uh, I'll show you that, then we'll get it in the fridge to sit for a day. 
Bar Jerked Boston Butt is all ready for the fridge. Let's nestle it in there for at least 24 hours. Then the next time I see you junkies, it'll be time to throw it in the oven and cook it low and slow. Our six pound jerk Boston butt has sat for about a day and a half. It is now time to pull it out and bring it to room temp. As always, when you are cooking meat, whether you're grilling it, roasting it, deep frying it, uh, you really do want to make sure you bring it to room temp so it cooks nice and evenly. So after doing some math at 225 degrees, 40 minutes a pound, this is going to take about five hours uh, towards the end of the cooking process. Uh, of course, that process being low and slow, you're going to blast it um, with heat to make sure the outside the skin gets nice and crusty. So uh, we're going to continue to let this come to room temp uh, and then we're going to get it in our oven, of course using our cast iron since that does such a great job holding heat and we're going to set it and forget it. We have our pork in our cast iron. The oven's at about 250. If you notice, you're not going to hear a sizzle uh, that you normally hear when we use the old cast iron. Uh, it's simply not hot enough, and that's not the point here. Again, to make this jerk pulled pork, we're going to be cooking this low and slow. So it's time for it to go in its home for time being. We're going to close the door. See the oven. Is set at that 250 and we're gonna forget it for about five hours until then we are about three hours into this I wish you junkies could smell this you're getting all those lovely Jamaican curry spices the cinnamon the cloves the allspice mmm absolutely delicious. Failed to mention when I put it in, the way in which I did, did so with the fat cap up. I alluded, that, I alluded to that earlier, but what you're looking at is the fat cap, and fat is always equals flavor, right? So that's why we typically do it this way, so all of that flavor drips and further uh, marinates the jerk Boston butt. All right, junkies, it's time to pull our jerk pork butt out of the oven. It's been in there closer to six hours at 225. Uh, during the last 20 minutes, we cranked up the oven to about 450 to really scorch the skin and make sure everything is nice and crispy. So we're going to pull it out. Oh, man, that is... That is something special right there. Again, those smells, just that curry and the individual spices within the curry, the cinnamon, the cloves, the allspice, the cardamom. Um, beautiful thing. So we're gonna pull this thing out, let it settle, and you can see the bone right there, which should just pull right out. And we'll start pulling it apart and we'll trough it up. I wanted to show you guys before I start shredding it up with my two forks, uh, the bone. Now the bone should come straight out. The meat should fall literally off the bone and your bone should be nice and clean looking like this. Uh, again, if you cooked it correctly, when you cook it low and slow, all the meat will fall right off the bone and you should have a clean bone. We'll take it, throw it in the garbage, or use it for stock. You could repurpose the bone as well. Lots of good flavor uh, still inside there. The marrow and such, a little more co co collagen. So you could you know, use the bone uh, in a stock or a soup, pea soup. That would be a great idea. Um, so we'll get this shredded up, and then, as always, we'll get it troughed up.
Here is our jerk pulled pork all troughed up. We have our pork that's been cooking low and slow for the day. Hit with that dry curry rub. And then we also lathered on a wet marinade. We quickly did up a mango avocado slaw. So like the name says, you have avocado in there, the leftover mango that we didn't use for all of that wet marinade, onions, garlic, uh, carrots, whole bunch of good stuff. And to wash it all down, pick up this awesome bottle from Kazuba and Sons. Their rye whiskey. I figured their rye whiskey would pair really well with the jerk pulled pork to really complement uh, both the flavor, spice profile. Again, a rye whiskey is going to be a bit more dry and spicy. And more than that, I mean, aside from, you know, Kazuba and Sons making an exemplary product, they are very supportive, supportive of the scene. Uh, not only supportive of the music and culture scene here, uh, but also more importantly, they repurposed a distillery down here, downtown here in St. Pete to make hand sanitizer. Uh, they were, um, I'm going to go on a limb and say they were the first to go ahead and do that uh, right when the uh, hand sanitizer shortages started, started to occur. So big love, huge shout out to Kazuba and Sons here in downtown St. Pete. I cannot wait to open this up. Uh, and as always, lovely bag. You know, junk loves gift, gift wrapping. You always could reuse these bags. Um, you know, part of the frugal life to reuse stuff. But here we go again, guys, the jerk pulled pork. Thank you as always for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay well. Keep safe and wash your junk. Until next time, junkies. I want to hop back in here. I never really bothered looking at the bottles. I typically just drink it um, quickly because it's so delicious. But the, uh, the high wheat rye whiskey that I have... It's pretty run-of-the-mill. I mean, yeah, I love the labeling and packaging. Um, you know, fantastic. But I really want to zoom in and focus in on the bottling of their rye, the Mr. Rye, the, the 100%. Um, really cool stuff. You can see the motif is very, you know, 1920s Prohibition, which I'm a total sucker for. F. Scott Fitzgerald is, of course, one of my favorite writers. But, um, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll take care of this in, uh, in post-production, but just to give you an idea. Oh, and these are the gummy bears. They do a, uh, a uh, whiskey and coke uh, gummy bear. Uh, it's pretty good. Why not? Right? So pretty dangerous shopping at the distillery. They have so much awesome stuff, including vodka. They also have a couple of different types of vodka. They have wheat and potato vodka. I really don't drink vodka, um, but I hear it's very delicious. And if you've ever seen the box vodka, uh, whether in ABC or Total Wine and Liquor, uh, that's them as well. So they make a wheat vodka. Uh, they make a, a potato vodka as well. So they do it all at Kazuba and Sons Distillery. So definitely check them out. And again, huge shout out, big love to them for pivoting to make hand sanitizer during these dystopian times. All right, take care, junkies.